This video is a tutorial for Microsoft OneNote on the iPhone. OneNote is a powerful note-taking application available on most devices with cloud syncing and other powerful features to help you organize and take better notes. Microsoft OneNote is available for free. However, some features found in this tutorial may require you to have a Microsoft 365 subscription. Timestamps are available in the description below if there is a specific feature you're looking for. Otherwise, sit back and enjoy this tutorial video. When you open OneNote, you'll be presented with a list of notebooks if you have any already. At the bottom is a menu consisting of three items, notebooks, search and sticky notes. In the top right corner, you'll see a plus icon and an edit button, which we'll discuss later. And in the top left corner, you'll see your Microsoft account profile picture Tapping on this gives you access to your account and app related settings. It's here that we'll begin this tutorial. Once you've tapped your profile picture in the top right corner of the app, a menu will appear. At the top, we can tap our account details to add a new account and switch between them. Tapping on the account we are currently signed into will also allow us to sign out of our account or delete the account. Under storage accounts, we can manage which cloud services are used to synchronize changes on our notebooks, which is particularly handy if we're using OneNote on several different devices. You can add additional OneDrive or OneDrive for business accounts here. Currently, other cloud storage services are not supported, at least not when using the iPhone. Back on the menu, the next option is to request help and give feedback if you're having issues using the app and at the bottom is settings, which contain all of the settings for the app. In the settings menu, the first option is for quick notes. Under this menu, you can use the toggle to indicate whether recent notes can be displayed in the today view widget and which one of your notebooks quick notes will be stored. Under edit and view, we can change our notes default look including the default font and font size. You can choose a font from the wide range of Office compatible fonts and iOS system fonts. Tapping the I button next to the font will give you the variations of the font that are available. To change the size of the font, you can tap the plus or minus button to change the size. Please bear in mind these changes do not affect your existing notes only ones you will create in the future. Also on this menu, you can enable or disable spell check. Hide author's names if you're working on a notebook or note collaboratively. Turn off capitalizing the first letter of a new sentence. And save photos as a PDF when you use Microsoft Lens. On the sync section of the settings menu, we can choose whether or not we want notebook attachments to automatically synchronize for offline use. Under navigation, we can choose what happens each time we create a new page in our notebook. By default, a new page is added to the bottom or the end of our list of pages. We can change this so that new pages are at the top of the list if we want this. The second option lets us toggle whether or not we want images and drawings to show in the page previews when we are looking at a list of pages. Finally, on the settings menu, we have options for sending feedback to Microsoft about the app. We can see a list of other apps available from Microsoft with buttons to download or open them. We can view a list of recent updates to the app. We can choose to export all of our data and adjust privacy settings. Back on the main screen where we view our list of notebooks, we can see a plus icon in the top right corner of the screen. Tapping this allows us to create a new notebook. We can give the notebook a name, give it a color and choose where the notebook is stored. If we have signed into more than one cloud service, back on the settings menu. Tap create to create your notebook. 
To understand how notebooks are organized is quite simple. Inside each notebook are sections, which are like chapters of a book. Within each section, we can add the pages that make up the section. When you create a new notebook or tap an existing one, you'll be shown a list of sections within the notebook. Long pressing on a section brings up a menu at the bottom. The first icon lets us delete the section. You can also delete a section by swiping from right to left over it and tapping on delete. The second button lets us copy the section or move it to another notebook. The third button lets us rename this section. The fourth button lets us choose a new color for it. And the last icon lets us lock the section with a password. After you have long pressed on a section, tapping the three lines next to each section title lets you rearrange the order of sections by tapping, holding and dragging it up or down. To add more sections to our notebook, we can tap the plus icon in the top right corner of the screen. Above this is three dots, which lets us share the notebook with other than OneNote users. We can either invite people to the notebook directly or copy a link to the notebook to share by email, messaging or a different app. The other item on the three dots menu gives us access to the settings menu we explored earlier in this tutorial. Finally, in the top right corner of the screen is the edit button, which performs the same function as long pressing on a section that we discussed earlier in this section of the tutorial. Tap on a section to open it up. When we tap on a section, it will show us a list of all available pages inside it. To add a new page, click on the plus icon in the bottom right corner of the screen. This opens up a new screen, allowing you to create your first page. The first thing we can do is give the page a title at the top. Then we can tap the section below to start adding items to the page. We can start typing by using the on-screen keyboard. Above the keyboard we can see a menu, letting us add different item types to the page. The first icon is a picture of a camera. Tapping this lets us add a picture to our notes, either by using the device's camera or choosing a picture from the iPhone's photo library. Once we have selected a photo, we can crop and rotate it before adding it to the page. Tap on Done to add it to the page. With the picture added to the page, we can tap on it to select it. With the image selected, we can drag the image in the corners to resize it. Tapping on an image also brings up a menu. On this menu, we can cut, copy or delete the image. We can rotate it left or right. Then tapping the arrow gives us more options. We can add alt text, which adds a description to the image for visually impaired users or we can set the picture as a background image for the page. When we do this, we can type over the top of the image instead of only underneath it. However, at the time of making this video, it's not possible to change or delete the background image using this app. You would need to use the desktop version of the app to change this. This is a bit annoying, but something to bear in mind. The second icon on the menu above the keyboard Let's us add an audio recording using your iPhone's microphone. Tapping this immediately starts the recording of audio. Tap stop recording to end the recording. This creates an audio icon on your page with the time and date of the recording underneath it. If you tap on the audio icon, a menu appears giving you some options. You can cut, copy or delete the recording just like with images. 
you can tap play to play back the audio. Then if you click the arrow on this menu, you can see options to rename the audio file and add alt text, which will add a description to the file for hearing impaired users. The icons can also be dragged and moved to different places on the page. The third icon on the menu above the keyboard lets you create a tick box, which is useful for creating to-do style lists on the page. Tapping on a box will tick or untick it. The next two items on the menu lets us create bulleted or numbered lists. After this are two icons that let us change the indent of the text, moving it left or right. Notice that when you use this function with bulleted or numbered lists, the bullet changes depending on its location on the page. The last two buttons on this menu let us make the text bold. And finally, we can hide the keyboard. To select some of the text you have typed, double tap on it. This brings up a menu. You can cut, copy and paste. You can select all the text on the page. And tapping on the arrow lets you look up the definition of the word. And finally, you can share your selection. In the top right corner of the page, you can see a pen icon. Tapping this lets you use your finger to draw on the page. Tap the first icon, which is a pen, and then start drawing. Unlike the iPad and desktop version of the app, you do not have options for changing the color. The second icon is a highlighter. This lets you highlight text on a page, adding color behind the words, without blocking the typed text. Again, you are limited to a single color on this app at the time of making this video. The third icon is an eraser that lets you delete anything you have drawn. And finally, there is an undo button that lets you go back a step. With items you have drawn on the page, it is possible to select them by double tapping on them. Then you can move and resize the drawing. Drawing on the iPhone version of OneNote is very limited compared to other versions found elsewhere. There is currently no option for handwriting to text conversion or automatic shape recognition. To zoom in or out of a page, you can pinch to zoom to adjust your view of the page. Currently, there are no obvious undo or redo buttons on this page either. To bring up the undo redo options, shake your phone quickly to bring up the menu. Finally, in the top right corner of the screen, there are three dots. Tapping this brings up the options menu for the page. The first option lets you delete the page. Viewers list lets you view all the items on your page as a list. And you can copy a link to this specific page in your notebook and you can move the page to another section of your notebook. Immersive Reader opens up your page in a different view and lets your device read your typed notes back to you. Tap on the play button to begin playback or tap the settings icon next to it to control playback speed and whether you want a male or female voice reading it. From here, you can send a copy of the page either with Outlook or via another app. Sync Now will synchronize the updates you've made to your notebook to your chosen cloud service. Switch Background toggles the page between light and dark mode. And finally, Settings takes you to the settings page of the app discussed at the beginning of this tutorial. To leave this page and go back to the section, click the back button in the top left corner of the screen. Any changes you have made will be saved automatically. You will now see a list of pages available in this section. 
Long pressing on a page will bring up a menu at the bottom. The first option is to delete the page. The second option lets you move the page to a different section of the notebook. Then the last two icons let you indent the page title left or right. Pages can be rearranged by tapping, holding and dragging on the three lines next to each page title. In the top right corner, you will see three dots. Tapping this brings up a small menu. The first is called Sort Pages, which lets you arrange the pages by alphabetical order, the date created or the date modified. From here, you can also share the notebook either with a direct invite or via copying a link. And the last option takes you to the settings section of the app discussed at the beginning of this tutorial. The last thing to note, above the plus icon, in the bottom right corner of the screen is a tick box icon. Tapping this lets you quickly add a to-do list in this section of your notebook. On the bottom menu of the app, the middle option is for search. Tapping this lets you search your notebooks for specific things. You can also search sticky notes, which we'll talk about in the next part of this tutorial. Type what you want to search for in the text field. You will then be presented with a list of pages where this text can be found. Tapping the search result takes you straight to the page with the text highlighted. Recent searches are shown underneath the text field. Tapping them starts the search again, or you can delete that recent search by swiping from right to left over the top and then tapping delete. Sticky notes are like post-it notes in real life, allowing you to make small notes for important items which are then saved to a notebook. Tap sticky notes on the bottom menu to show any sticky notes you currently have. To create a new sticky note, tap the plus icon in the bottom right corner of the screen. You can then immediately begin typing. Above the keyboard is a menu with some options for your notes. The camera icon lets you take a picture or choose an image from your iPhone photo library. Then we have some basic text formatting options, including bold, italicize, underline and strike through. You can then add a bulleted list to your sticky note with the last icon. Whilst editing a sticky note, in the top right corner you'll see three dots. Tapping this lets you change the colour of the sticky note. Next to this is a share icon that uses the iPhone share sheet to share this sticky note via another app. To finish editing the sticky note, click the downwards facing arrow in the top left corner of the screen. For each sticky note, you can swipe from right to left over it to bring up some options. From this menu, you can quickly share the note, change its colour or delete it. That's it for this tutorial for Microsoft OneNote for the iPhone. If you found this video useful, please like, comment and subscribe. If you want to leave a tip, please use the super thanks button here on YouTube or you can head over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash buzzkill to leave a tip there. PayPal, debit and credit cards and Apple Pay are all accepted. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll be back soon with some more iPhone tutorials.